I have a two shot. Why do you think the Lone Ranger is still so tremendously popular today? Well, Nelson, first of all, let me greet you and your listeners with and watchers with my traditional greeting of Tai Kimosabe, which means faithful friends. And I sure have a lot of faithful friends right here in St. Louis. Now, your question. Why do you think uh, that the Lone Ranger is still so tremendously popular today? Well, the Lone Ranger show deals fair play, honesty, and it's, uh, it's Americana. And uh, after all, uh, we Americans are the greatest people in the world, and our kids mean a lot to us. What do you think he says about the, the heritage of this country of ours? Only the greatest. I like that. Uh, American flag. Very good, Nelson. What's the greatest joy this, uh, this character has brought you? Is it, has the character taught you anything? Oh, I'm sure it has. Uh, I've been doing the Lone Ranger for 31 years. 30 years in the mask and one year in glasses. Uh, it's certainly made me a more appreciative person of my fellow man, uh, boys and girls of our country. It's taught me fair play, honesty, and the right to fight for that which is right. Speaking of your mask, are you still going to continue that fight? Oh, absolutely. I'll never give that fight up, and uh, I'm going to get that mask back. I've got too many, too many people that are signed petitions. I have over two million signatures demanding that the mask be returned to Clayton Moore. 31 years is a long time. Why do you think we still need heroes like the Lone Ranger in our country today? Well, Nelson, you know, it's, uh, we've lost a lot of heroes. First of all, John Wayne, uh, my sidekick, very fine gentleman, Jay Silverheels, who passed away five months ago. Duncan Ronaldo, the Cisco kid. Uh, we have to look up to, to, to heroes. It's good, for, it's good for our country. It's good for the nation. I had a hero when I was a boy. Tom Mix, William S. Hart, Ken Maynard. You had a hero when you were a boy. Better have been the Lone Ranger. <laughs> okay, Nelson, nice seeing you. And uh, ladies and gentlemen and boys and girls of television land, remember, fair play, honesty, love your country, United States of America. Adios, Kimosabis. Great. Okay. Good. You. you did it. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Hi there, boys and girls. Let's catch the big kids and the little kids. First, we're going to do the little kids. Hi, boys and girls. There's a little riser over here. You want to get the finest compliments and greetings of an Indian and a white man that is told of how each other. You want to do this? Why don't you? This is the ring here. I always agree. All of you, ladies and gentlemen, and boys and girls, thank you. All of you here today, I'm sure, including my very face of the Today I would like to dedicate about four or five years ago. Bill, you want to I would, didn't get to see mommy or, or daddy or their little dog or their yeah, little cat or, or see the trees, the beautiful blue sky, the American flag. But they knew me. Oh, they knew me. Well, I took out my single action Colt 45 and the spun the gun, which I'm told, which I will do, and put it away like that. And when that gun went down into that holster, just like this, they jumped up and screamed and clapped and yelled. Yet how did they know that that gun was in my holster and my hand was off the gun? I don't know. Maybe they heard the sound of the, of the leather, the gun going into the holster. But uh, I'm going to spin these guns for you boys and girls here today. 
But I want you to remember one thing. And you, you big guys, too. It's the empty gun that always kills. Kids never touch a real gun. Real guns are dangerous. Real guns can kill. So if Dad has a gun at home, you boys and girls, don't ever touch it. Forget where the gun is if you know where it is. Play with your cap guns and even be careful with your cap guns. So I'm going to spin these guns a little bit. Would you hold the microphone, Fred? Silver. You know, the Lone Ranger, our show is always based on the truth. And I will be very truthful with you ladies and gentlemen, and you youngsters too, because we always have to tell the truth. And did you train Silver? Yes, I, I did. And I started Silver when he was a three-year-old. In 1954, we put him in the picture for the very first time. Jay Silverheels, Tunnel. And myself trained both of the horses. Jay was a wonderful athlete. He was a lacrosse player, which is an Indian game. He was a boxer in the ring. You had a picture with a lot of rocks and trees, and you go pretty fast. We run our horses probably 25, 30 miles an hour, and they were the full. Jay's a very notorious hotline called Butch Cavendish. Six Texas Rangers rode into an ambush. Led into this ambush by a half-breed scout by the name of Collins. The outlaws were pitched in the hills up above us. As the six Rangers rode into Vinus Gap, the outlaws opened fire. Six horses hit the ground. Five Texas Rangers were killed. One man injured by the Called to a water hole nearby, lay there for overnight. Next day, a Indian came along. He checked the six horses, the five dead Texas strangers, and he looked off to the distance and he saw his one man. So he made his way very cautiously and very carefully toward the, this wounded man. And as he approached this ranger, he noticed around his neck was a chain with an Indian arrow ring. His memory went back to many, many years ago. There was a battle between the white men and the Indians. A little Indian white boy, the white boy saved this little Indian boy's life. And in appreciation, this little Indian boy gave this white boy an Indian arrow ring. There was the same ring around this white man's neck. It had to be the same boy now holding the man. So the Indian nurse. This white man back to walk with all the Indian lore as he moved. About the second day, the white man looked up and he saw him as his enemy. And the Indian looked at him and he said, uh, You must be frightened. Me, named Tati, you call me Peter Shadi. 